Good morning, y'all. I'm in the middle of nowhere once again, going fishing. So I'll talk to you when I get down to the fishing grounds. So there are two big things that I want to do today. The first thing, obviously, is to catch a big fish. And there should be no problem doing it because it's October, winter, the big lingcod, the big cabazon, should be in close spawning. Now, the second thing I want to do is cook up something that came to me in a dream. It just revealed itself to me this morning, and that is a fish burger. And uh, I'd never seen this recipe before. I had never looked it up. It just came to me, I don't know how, but it should all come together nicely. First thing we got to do is catch fish to cook it. Uh -huh. Swim baits got fresh knots. Yeah. Fluorocarbon leaders on the main line hunting for spots. Throwing out my bait along the bank by the rocks. Laying bass around the clock. My fish game don't stop. Now some people might disagree with me, but I'm convinced to catch big lingcod, big cabazon in the winter time like this, you need a longer rod. This one is nine foot four. You also need a heavy weight. One ounce and one and a half ounces should be good. Be able to cast out farther than you would with your eight foot rod and your three quarter ounce weight. Yeah, that'll still catch fish, but not the monsters in my opinion. Now, last time I used this underwater camera, the SD card popped out. I'm hoping it doesn't happen today because I want to see some underwater footage. I'm going to check it every once in a while. You got me? Am I live? Am I live on camera? Let's do this. Let's see what we can get under there. I want to feel some head shakes, baby. Let's go. Ha ha! A lot of kelp down there. I see it. I see it. All right, how deep is it? The first thing you got to do whenever you're fishing a swim bay like this, let it sink to the bottom. You got to check how deep it is. All right, there's bottom. Now reel it in, baby. That camera might entice a bite. I bet something might even go for that camera. Never fished this area before. Completely new to me. Kind of a rough day today. It's five and a half to six foot swell. It's at 16 seconds, but there's a lot of power behind these waves. Luckily, there's not much wind. You know, having this camera on here almost acts like a float, and which I really don't want that. I want that weight to be producing the action of the swim bait. That's why I said you want a heavy weight, one and a half ounce, so you can reel it in fast so that tail moves and it activates the lateral line on the fish. First thing we're doing, I'm trying to do, catch a fish, a big one, and then I can focus on getting some food. You know, I do have the bobber rig also. I've got the bobber with me if I need to. You know, I'd love to keep this thing on and I'm really curious to see what it looks like down there while catching a fish, but I think my chances of catching a fish are better if I don't have this on, so I'm taking it off. Before I get started fishing, I just want y'all to know that I said there's gonna be two runs of this shirt. It's that limited edition perch shirt. These will never be available again. Fisherman'sLife.net if you want to pick them out. Got hoodies, these long sleeves, and t-shirts. But now, I'm going for even bigger. I've got a one and a half ounce weight and a seven inch Kitek. Come on, baby. I'm ready to feel that thump. I'm ready to feel that thump. Let's go. Big one on the way, right here. Let's go, let's go. Big one, baby, big one, big one. Come on, man. PB from shore today. That's what I'm going for. So now what I'm doing, now that I got a new swim bait on, I'm starting out over here and I'm gonna work my way all the way around and I'm gonna adjust my cast five feet to the right, next cast, five feet to the right, next cast, and cover this whole area. With a heavier weight like this too, this is how I like to fish it. I like to reel, oh, that was a rock. But I like to reel down to it, lift it up, don't reel, bring it down while reeling, lift it up, and that way, you're kind of fishing it like jigging from a boat, but you're from shore. And it works really well if you're a lot higher. If you're like right there on the, on the water, at the water level, it doesn't work as well because you're just dragging. But if you're on top, you can really lift it up and bring it down, lift it up 10 feet, bring it back down. That's how I've gotten hooked up on some big, big fish. All right, it's 10.35. I like to try to stay on some kind of schedule while fishing. So at 10.45, I'm going to leave this spot and try somewhere more calm. And if I was a fish, big lingcod or something, 
this is where I would want to be, inside this cove, just like a trout staying behind a big rock, you don't want to expel as much any energy if you don't have to. It's all about conserving energy in this world. And there felt like a fish. Oh, there's a fish. Oh man, I missed him. Come on back for it. No. That was a fish, y'all. There's a fish here. It's ready to get caught by me. Come on, baby. Come on up for it. I know you're here, you're waiting for food. You went, probably went back to his hole, ready to eat again. Come on now. No, no, not there. Come on, baby. No, 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 not there, not there. Almost, come on up. Come on up, right about here, right about here. Right about here. Come on, oh. This is my last cast. Wind is really picking up out there. It's getting kind of rough, but I know one more cove where I can try. So, last cast here, and I'm gonna make my way over. All right, y'all, this is the little cove I was talking about. It looks clear enough to throw the underwater camera, so that's what I'm gonna do. Let's check it out, see what's under there. See all these empty mussel shells? Kind of weird that they're all piled up there. See that small lingcod? Well, that and the kelp greenling from the previous clip were the only fish that I saw in an hour of underwater footage. Tons of tons of sea urchin down there too. Not much life, honestly. Now I fished without the underwater camera for three hours. Maybe got two bites, and that was it. It was a slow day. Uh oh, that don't feel good. I think the camera's stuck. I hope it's just the bait, but I think it's the camera. No, dang it. Oh, I hope it's the weight. I hope it's the weight, y'all. Oh, it came off, came off, came off. Woo! Close one. Uh, my line's all frayed up, so I gotta retie. Take off the camera, too. Was that a fish or was that bottom? I couldn't tell. That was a hard one to tell. I don't know about that. What in the world was that? Oh, what's that? What's going on here? Are those fish? Are those bites? What's going on here? This is where I think it bit right here. Right there on the tail. I mean, that doesn't get any more clear that that's a fish. 12.47 right now. I've been out here since 9. 10, 11, 12. Four hours almost. All right, y'all, added a little teaser on top. Still got the swim bait on the bottom. Now the only thing I have right now is faith. Faith that this rock won't break and I fall to my you know what. And also faith that these fish are gonna bite. Come on now. Oh, come on. Come on, one time. Give me a fish. Come on, man. This is too long, I need a fish. That big bite. Come on, I'm going crazy now. Can I get one? Can I get one? That's the question. Can I get one? Can I get one? Come on now, let's make some luck, baby. Come on, I feel it. There's a vermilion out there. There's a vermilion, there's a big lingcod. There's also a big cabazon. There's a huge black rockfish out there. Huge grassy also. Come on, there's tons of fish out there. Tons of fish. Come on, baby. Come on, come on. I know you like that swim bait. Come on, leave it a little jiggle for you. Come on, come on, baby. Man, you know what? High tide was at 11.30. I think I'm gonna to have to wait the five and a half, six hours until slack tide to have a, the best shot. So it's two o'clock right now. I'm gonna wait it out four more hours. Oh man. All right, y'all, last cast, and I'm packing it up, heading out somewhere else. Ah, yeah. Man, any fancy filming or anything like that, I don't have time for it. I gotta to get to the other spot. Well, here's the spot. I just gotta be extra careful because I don't have a rope. Got about 40 pounds of gear on my back, too. Once I get down this first part, ugh, that's not so bad. 
just a dang big backpack on my back. Okay, taking off the backpack. Let's leave this up here, actually. If I need it, I can come and grab it. You know what? Instead of risking my life like that, I can save a little, I can spare a little time, go back to the car, uh, and get uh, my rope. Get my rope tied onto this. This will make me feel a little bit more comfortable. Now, you know, even though I have this rope, I'm not putting my life on it. I'm trying to use it as little as possible. All right. Good times, man. Good times climbing the cliffs. All right. Made it. All right, y'all. Another new spot, nice and protected cove. I don't know, fingers crossed, man. I always have high hopes when I get to a new spot. Some big waves coming in every once in a while. Kelp Greenling, y'all. Kelp Greenling. I'll take it, dude. Hey man, well look at that, a little kelp greenling. These need to be 12 inches to keep, and that is for sure 12 inches, I'm pretty dang sure he came up right on top and bit it. But hey, that'll work for a catch and cook. I'll cook that up, let me make sure he's 12 inches. On the teaser, y'all, look at that. Came up right on top to get it, look at the pattern on him. All right, well there's fish out here. Right there between the eyes. Sorry little guy, but you gotta go. Fish always taste better when you bleed them. Oh man, I'm really curious what he's got in his stomach because it's really hard in here. It actually feels like a hook almost. We'll check that out later. And this is how I rigged it right here. Just like this, straight through the nose. That's all. Just so it swims like that. That's it. I know y'all can't see me very well because of the sun, but man, does that feel good. Get a fish on a swim bait? Heck yeah. Trying all day. Hey, seriously, not the biggest fish, but man, this meal is going to taste so good. It's going to be so rewarding just to cook this up after fishing all day for one fish. Man, y'all, this is about as ghetto as you can get it. Right here on the rocks, I forgot my good knife at home, so I got to use this little pocket knife. Let's do it. Now, kelp greenling, they are known to have parasites, all right? So if you remember and saw the video that I did last time, I'm going to fillet this guy the exact same way. Man, this is tough. It is tough like this with all the jagged rocks, no smooth spots. Let's see how close I can get to a clean fillet. Now, this knife isn't the sharpest, okay? Just warning y'all. Oh yeah, I really want to see what he's been eating too, so let's check that out. Thank you so much for sacrificing yourself to me today. It was a rough day, man. But I do appreciate you. For a dull ass pocket knife, that's coming along pretty well. Hey, I'm proud of that fillet. Anybody who's talking crap about it, I'd like to see you try that with this knife. This is like medical precision right there. There's the gallbladder. See that green? Looks like it's got eggs. All right, interesting. But at the same time, it looks like it's got a sperm sac. So what's going on here? Is that a sperm sac? And oh no, that's just its intestines. I thought maybe it could inseminate itself, but I don't think so. That's just the sperm. Toss that, get out of here. Now, let's figure out what he's eating, because I felt something hard in here. Let's check it out. A little crabby? No, what is this? What is this thing? What in the world is all this? Oh, what is that? There's some rocks. Oh, interesting. He, he likes the rocks. Oh, like a muscle or something, huh? That's the thing that a muscle attaches to. And there's some crab claws. There's a nice crab claw right there also. That's its gills or something? Or something right here. Oh, look, a little limpid. A limpid. So he's eating rocks, limpids, crabs, mussels. Man, this is a, this is a survivor. I'm actually really surprised. This is one of the first cup greenling that I don't see any parasites in. 
nice clean kelp greenling i'm really interested to see how this is going to taste because this recipe literally came to me in a dream woke up and there there it was ready for me to cook so i don't know i think it's going to be good got some panko flakes salt pepper garlic i don't even need to wash this fish i think it's fine just like that man it's still firm though that's the only problem get like man this is just so fresh that it's just so firm i don't know if this is going to work got to try though all right let's just break this thing up break it up break it up like you're making i don't know what do you call those fish balls all right, break them all up just like that if this tastes good it's going to be so funny i mean as long as it sticks together i think it will so i think that right there will be enough for one burger but i'm hungry so i'm going to make two burgers because i'm pretty confident this is going to taste good so filet number two mashing it up the same way well dinner's served y'all <laughs> no don't do that all right here i'm going to put some panko flakes i guess you could put breadcrumbs also just you know i don't know a handful now something very random you might say my potato peeler and of course a potato half of this potato man maybe even the whole thing because that's a lot of fish so let's just mash it up and i think when you're grating this potato it's important to do it on the little setting if you will but now look how wet that is now we don't want all that to be wet like that and if you ever made hash browns you know that all you need for something to stick together is potato i'm not drying it out completely but i'm just hoping that that's enough potato just to keep everything stuck together and I also think something to make it all stick together, also an egg. Mix this up, but not the whole egg. I don't know, about half of it probably. I'll pick that up later, y'all. <laughs> I, I really have no idea how this is going to turn out when I, when I cook it. Could be good. I think that's going to work, man. Look at that. I think that's going to work. It almost looks like ground beef. Now the last really weird ingredient you're going to say, a beet. Why do you need a beet? Well. I don't know. I was thinking burger, right? And this is just for color. You really don't need this. This is just for color. Make it look red. Get this beet juice in here. Let's see what it does. Can I squeeze this out? That's the question. Just for color, just for color, right? And I was going to use sourdough, but just that sourdough is just such a strong flavor. And I really want to see how this fish tastes by itself. So I got potato bread. So I'm really not too concerned if this bread gets cold because I'm doing this first. All that I'm worried about is that it gets nice crispy brown on it. No, not quite. All right, that's nice. Number one, one and done. Put that on the side here on the rock. All right, y'all, this is taking me a long time to get this bread done, but hey, if you were at home and you had a, a stove with a couple pans and a couple burners, you can have this whole meal done already. I'm going on 20 minutes making this bread brown. Let me get my oil. Before that, can I get a like, though, for cooking on these rocks? Oh, I got a whole kitchen in this backpack here. Oh, here's some avocado oil. Let's see how this turns out. This is the moment of truth. Kelp Greenling Burgers. That's enough for one, I think. And I should be able to flatten it out. And what I'm hoping for is that the starch, the egg, the panko will allow this all just to stick together. So far, so good. Sticking together, it looks like. It's so funny because I added the beet juice. You would never know what this is. Like turkey? Like fish? No way, this is fish. Let's flip it over. Got a big smile on my face because I think this is going to work. Careful now. Careful, careful, careful. Oh, baby. Look at that stuck together it's weird because when you cook a blue cabazon or you cook a blue lingcod right when you put that meat in the pan that blue goes away and it turns white but with the beet juice it's staying red and i'm almost thinking like it should be turning white but it's not so I, you know i don't know <laughs> it's just funny you know that beet juice totally optional yeah if you want this to look good do not use that beet because, I mean, it's almost cooked, but, dude, it just looks gross. Okay, y'all. It is the moment of truth. Let's get this burger back on the bread. Avocado spread out on it. Man, honestly, it's 6.20 right now. I wanted to be done with everything today by 1. You know, that's what happens when you're shore fishing. Sometimes things don't go as planned. But that's a lot of butter on the bread. Just like that, I can eat these two 
easy, especially not having eaten all day. Let's just try it. Just the meat <laughs> with the beet juice. Nothing too special. Tastes a little bit like a crab cake, fish cake type of thing. It's kind of weird. Not bad, not amazing, kind of weird in a good way. Would I do this again? Probably not on the rocks. Would I give it a try at home where I can have this done in 20 minutes instead of an hour and a half? Yeah, I'll try that. Ooh, that first bite's getting down into my stomach. I could feel it spreading out through my body. All my limbs and legs and feet and hands, they're just starting to get a little bit more energy now. But yeah, I'm gonna finish this. I'm gonna eat this whole thing. Ain't nothing wrong with that. It's not like mind blowing. It's good though. Hey, that's good. That's good. I'm going fishing with Andrew in a couple days. He's going salmon fishing. One of the last trips of the year. He's coming up from San Diego to fish with me on my boat. I might make this for him because we're going to fish for rockfish also. See what he thinks. See what he would do differently. If you have any ideas, let me know and I'll try to change it. Or, like I said in the last video, if you have any ideas for another catch and cook, something interesting, crazy, random idea of your own, let me know and I'll try to do it. All right, y'all, thank you for sticking with me. Thank you for a million subscribers again. I'm not going to say that anymore. That's the last time I'm saying that. If you want these limited edition Fisherman's Life perch shirts, check out the website, fishermanslife.net. I will see you guys soon. I got a long hike up, a scary hike up. I got about another half an hour before the sun goes down, and I might fish a little bit first. So, all right, see you guys. Do this on your own, y'all.